Well, hello everybody and welcome back for another look at what's growing on. We kind of missed last Thursday's video update, so I figured we'll throw that in the beginning of today to get things, uh, you know, properly updated. And it's also kind of been a while since we've been down in the dungeon, so I figured we'll take a quick pop down there. And then, uh, yeah, definitely outside to see how things are doing in a proper garden while I've got uh, a couple months to, to actually be gardening in the soil. So that's that's a nice change but i've got some very exciting stuff i want to show you out there so stick around but let's get looking at uh, what's starting to go towards that pepper jungle concept up here in the bear's den garden getting low down and dirty here taking a look at what's growing under those shop leds i know it makes kind of a weird strobing effect but please bear with me first off we've got the orange habanero here which if we take a good look at the top we can see even though it's so tiny this is starting to flower beside that we've got the trinidad scorpion cross butch tea red this is doing very well and i'm going to try the zoom but i hate the clicky effect in there hopefully you can see that pepper a little better this time around still hanging on though doing all right all right hang on i'm just going to zoom out off camera yeah not a big fan of the zoom on this new camera but the, the picture quality is not bad I've got one more level of HD that I can try improving this with and uh, I will do a short test video but I don't want to try that with something as long as a Sunday update. Here we have, this is the Bootla clamshell that was transplanted out of the Arrow Garden. Seems to be doing very well, which means this is probably the Bootla scorpion, and what do you know it is. Also seems to be doing fairly well, we haven't hit that point with either of these yet where it's diminishing returns right and then this little guy is a trinidad scorpion yellow just came out because yeah even removing this one um, bootless scorpion didn't really leave enough room and this thing was still getting shaded out so transplanted it out a little bit early but i'll show you the uh, arrow gardens here in a second did get some soil so I'll be transplanting this probably sometime in the next week, which is good because it's really suffering. But there's that Caribbean red hab. And then in the larger pot beside it, see the lemon hab that got transplanted on time. We can see the double cups are definitely doing my gardening some damage. But these larger 8-inch planters with trays seem to be working out all right. Got a lot of flowers up in here. But I have yet to see any fruit forming on this particular lemon. Oh, oh, check that. What do we have in the back there? Oh, that awful zoom again. That looks like a pepper to me. Fantastic, fantastic. Stay zoomed in, sorry about the shake. And then beyond the basil there, that is the Bad Brains early transplant. Again, since it went into a larger planter, it is totally springing back to life. And I kind of like the shape, so I'm very excited to see how that continues to grow. So shaky and such a bad zoom. I'm, I think it's probably a good thing that I'm going to be using the tripod more and more often. Here we've got uh, the Bootla clamshell that's still in the seed tray. Obviously this needs to come out soon. But we are down to two varieties in this garden now. The Bootla clamshell and the Bootla scorpion. Look at the leaves on this thing. Part of me just kind of wants to leave them in there even though it's the seed tray and uh, see what it can do. But a bigger part of me is concerned that it'll just turn out like the bad brains in the other arrow garden. And uh, it doesn't seem to be doing much of anything. Down here, I cut another one of the second peppers off from one of the back pods here. It hasn't really died off yet, so I think it might be rooting. And the little one that I put in behind here, that hopefully we can sort of see. Anyway, just in here. I pulled it up earlier today and it does have the beginning of roots on it so that is very exciting lots of these bootla crosses really to uh, to transplant out of here but this is all one plant this is all one plant and there's this little guy here and this is a cutting of the bootla scorpion that seems to be rooting as well but i'm i'm not ready to pull that one up and take a, a closer look yet so let's spin over a little bit Look at the other arrow garden. Okay, so here in the other arrow garden we have, this is the orange habanero that I moved in. I thought it would be 
doing a lot better than that, honestly. And here we have the bad brains that's been in there since I turned this garden on. And this is clearly a beautiful plant and doing quite well that way. Lots and lots of flower starts on here, but I'm still not getting any fruit. I did, where is it? Hang on. I did find some of the cheater juice that I picked up and of course the, you can't really see it there. I'm using miracle Grow Ultra Bloom 15, 30, 15, and uh, mixing it up at uh, mixing it up at appropriate ratios for for a half gallon. That seems to be working fairly well, because that's what I've been doing for the larger ones that are in soil now. I have started adding it to this arrow garden. We'll see another week or two with no peppers setting on here though. And then this thing is definitely going to move into the largest planter I can find with a tray. Huge fan of the trays. So yeah, I think I've got you know lots more transplanting to do up here in the bear stand, but I got myself some some more soil, and it's it's all good, right? It's it's a labor of love. Lots of growth though. Fresh new little branches trying to grow up out on this bad brained pepper. Because I did some major cutbacks the other day after the last video of up here, like major, and uh, yeah, it's still still not really working. I am still changing out the water in the jug for this giant cutting. Not seeing any roots in there yet, but leaves haven't all fallen off. Fallen off, so I'm you know continuing to be hopeful. All right, let's uh, move downstairs. So all right, I figured we'd stop here in the kitchen briefly on our way down to the dungeon and uh, look at the herbs that have, herbs, herbs, whichever you prefer, that have come out of the arrow garden. And I have these all sitting in double cup setups. And again, we're seeing what I would consider to be diminishing returns. Like the double cups do work for a good long time, but then your plant kind of gets to this point and it does seem spe fairly specific for the species where it just stops growing and all it really does is struggle. We've got, and hopefully this will come up on the camera, bad lighting I know, yeah that's not really coming up, but very little root growth extending out of the bottom of these cups. And for the size of the plant, I would certainly expect a lot more than that. So I think basil and especially looking over here, Hopefully you can see the thyme is not doing well at all. Really hasn't grown since it's been transplanted into the double cups. And it has occasionally gotten nutrients, so I blame the cups. Gonna have to move these into uh, nicer planters, I think, but that is not a project for today. Anyway, from here, it's down into the dungeon. Take a look at the fish and see how things are doing down there. So I guess the first little area down here is probably what's left of the floor garden. I have so much cleanup I need to do in here. I don't think any of these hawthorn cuttings actually made it. I don't think this coffee tree is surviving. The spider plants though, you can't kill a spider plant. These things just, they love punishment. I can, uh, I can kind of relate to these ones. But I think it's definitely time to lower these lights a little bit. So I'm just gonna untie their knot drop it down and I need to cluster these plants a little bit closer to each other but they'll be okay for now there's not a whole lot going on here at the moment nor is there going to be a whole lot going on down there anytime soon because it is kind of just house plants and I do want to make some some pretty serious changes to how things are growing down here in the dungeon one thing I definitely want to change in the uh, near future is where the Darwin table and the aquaponic gardens are set up. Being both right along the wall there and kind of connected to that shelf. And then right behind the Darwin table we have the stairway, which is mostly blocked off by that foil bag now. But I think that is where the rodents are gaining access to these two garden spaces. So if I can pull them just kind of away from the walls and have a more central setup. I think that will be very beneficial to, um, well, future gardening efforts down here. And while peppers are out, that still leaves a whole lot of plant varieties 
that uh, I can potentially eat and harvest from this basement space which is pretty much useless otherwise you can't really even get a pool table down here not comfortably so yeah let's take a look probably off tripod and uh, and see what's going on in those two gardens though insert shaky cam here so these are the spider plants that I did start out there are still quite a few shoots sitting to my left there but oh look volunteer tomato they're everywhere tomatoes are everywhere I love it I love it still got this one little tiny itty bitty cup pepper not quite sure why I'm leaving that but apparently I am Yahi Guyana spin it a little bit and while it is clearly suffering and dying the end result of that is we are finally getting some ripening on these peppers which is fantastic I think this is one thing that is definitely harmed by the lower temperatures of the basement but those lower temperatures of the basement are really consistent and once we do eventually get onto lake acreage and start building our earthship and uh, you know earthship inspired barns and outbuildings we're actually I think going to be able to save a small fortune by taking advantage of that fact it's a long story you'll have to stick around it'll all make sense later on flaming caddy cuttings are doing better under the fluorescent than they were over on the shelf although I notice that one looks a little sapsucker infested doesn't it I don't know if those are aphids or white flies but we got some over here too now you may be surprised to hear me say this but that's good because the fish diet, um, it, the protein is pretty much made up by aphids. And as I've moved things outside, I've gotten quite concerned about what I'm going to feed to them. I mean, that might even be why that tiny double cup pepper remains. Because it does produce some aphids for me. I should have shown you this upstairs, though. But um, we finally got some flowers on one of these flaming caddies. So maybe I will show you that on our way outside. And they are incredibly pretty little things. Um, as Shocks pointed out, they kind of look fake, actually. But we have the aquaponics to look at first while we're down here. So spin to the fish tank. And how does this camera like the fish tank? Well, it does all right. That's not terrible. You can see they're all pretty chill, pretty relaxed. A little lethargic because yeah protein levels are down in their diet these days but kind of toying with the idea of mashing up hard-boiled eggs shell and everything like I saw to do for young chicks and dumping that in there because they can eat the eggs and the shell will eventually break down and provide calcium and buffer the pH and just do all kinds of wonderful things that eggshells do so yeah I'm, I'm seriously with that idea for the not aphid season over here we can see that mint that was kind of plunked in there is doing surprisingly well it's wandering off towards the Darwin table in quest of a light spectrum that it likes I guess but mints seem to do all right in the temperatures of the dungeon so this is one thing that we can very successfully grow down here um, kind of looks interesting on the view screen i'll be curious to see how the edit comes up with this new camera i think this might be the first dungeon clip under this funky light anyway so bear with me please we got the mint forest still nothing in this bucket here but we can see our regular old sage doing quite nice we can see the tricolor sage here quite happy to no longer have the tomato seeds on top of it there quite the little kink it grew I'll cut it back it'll bush out a little bit all will be well there still got three little parsley plants struggling along mostly this is uh, fish food parsley it all ends up going back to them but I do occasionally take a little bit upstairs let's see another little mint jungle there and another empty bucket here now I know I've said this before but I am thinking very much about transferring out of these buckets and back into the black aquaponic table that I first got starting my gardens all those years ago because eight fill points, eight drain points, to me that's eight places that I can potentially have problems as compared to with the table I've got one entry and one exit 
were way less to manage and maintain and honestly I feel my plants did better with the uh, ebb and flow or flood and drain or whatever you prefer to call it setup that was provided by the auto siphon on the table than these plants are doing here so the trick with aquaponics really is you've got to provide both the wet cycle and the dry cycle then everything does as well as mint does all right um we should probably get wandering outside i guess oh yeah i want to show you that flaming caddy first then we'll wander outside all right so here is a look at that one flowering flaming caddy trying to get it in focus here now that's what we were told this plant was when we got it but you know if you looking at these flowers know for a fact that it's something different by all means please let me know down in the comments real pretty though it does kind of look fake all right outside all right well i don't know how much of that previous clip we missed but i guess that means i get to find myself some more berries doesn't it here we are sitting at one of the two hascap berry bushes we now know this to be the polar jewel hascap and uh, she is easily the queen of our berry bushes was the first one to produce flowers for the bees this year first one to produce fruit for us and i haven't really seen the birds attacking this one too much so we have gotten to enjoy a lot of these fruit ourselves this is supposed to get to be about eight feet tall eight feet wide nice little bush but i think out of the two of them it's the borales hascap that's going to take the spot of my favorite and i'll show you that one here in a second bad moment for this little guy with the sunlight and the shading and such but so this variety of the hascap berry only gets to be about half the size of the other one i think it's supposed to be three or four feet tall three or four feet wide and uh, it even though it is a smaller bush it seems to produce a much i want to call it a thicker fuller more flavorful berry and uh, it looks like Shock did a really good job oh, of picking this one clean, but I found one. So let me just get one of the uh, Polar Jewel Berries and we can compare the size and shape on these. Okay, so looking down here, we see the camera really needs to learn to focus. The berry on the top is kind of your standard issue Boralis Hascap. That's our shorter bush that we looked at second there. And the berry on the bottom is very much standard issue size and shape for the uh, Polar Jewel. Now, it put out a lot of these berries, but I think this one here just wins for me for size, shape, and overall, overall flavor. So, to quote, um, who was it, Stefan at Miracle Farms there, I think I'm probably going to clone myself about 600 of those ones. Very much prefer it as a variety. Need to keep a couple of them around just to kind of cross pollinate as i understand it because they're essentially a relative of a blueberry or a saskatoon but yeah out of those two bushes i will take that berry please and thank you from the land of obscure berry bushes brings us closer to the hens here but this is our black lace elderberry we brought this halfway across canada from a desert-like environment and it struggles every winter it is finally starting to grow back for us this year the last few thunderstorms actually really seem to have I don't know perked it right up I guess it just enjoys those high energy weather events but we're thinking about moving this up to where the goji bushes got moved so it can get um, just a whole lot more morning and daytime Sun in general gonna have to see how that goes and uh, gonna have to decide if we're putting something else in the hole or gonna fill it back in but apparently the chickens would like to say hello Get a quick look at our littles who are gonna try and escape out the door these guys have a long way to go before they're ready to lay for us and we need to start reducing numbers as they get closer but they sure have grown since they've been with us and they sure don't seem to mind being out here they're getting along better with the retired ladies than the retired ladies are getting along with them. But yeah, I know I say it all the time, but I really need to do a proper update on them because they are they are growing along really, really nicely. Really, really nicely. 
and I need to get the tripod out of the doorway before somebody actually does escape. Then on the other side of their run here, we've got the last of those tomatoes that, you know, sure, the sage is really happy to not be stuck under these things, but these, in my opinion, don't have a prayer of producing fruit at this point. I really, really should have planted them ages ago. Still going to find, I'm sure, a few places to stick them out, but yeah, I don't expect much. Mm -hmm. This is being spied on. Pick up the tripod so you can see. Up on the corner of the pallets. Checking us out. What's going on, Betty? Okay, so over here, give the jerky tripod motions, like I keep saying. Just trying to adapt and get used to this. We've got the Sas Smoky Saskatoons. This is their first year bearing fruit, and they are not really producing much of anything that will be edible. So I'm kind of just counting this year as a write off for them. Anything they produce, I'm going to let fall. And uh, I don't know what worst case scenario it produces more Saskatoon berry bushes that we have to move around. <gasps> oh no, edible fences. And there's here's a delightful little berry bush. We've got the gooseberry. I've learned not to count your gooseberries before they purple though. Really not too many left on here. So I don't know if that's bird theft or the plant is just still very young and struggling. Cause this is about the same age as the smoky Saskatoon we just saw and those two varieties of Hascat berries. Hopefully this is all on the camera. It's really hard to see with the glare right now, but yeah. This plant is doing particularly well and there are a few places where it feels like the fallen tips are starting to root into the ground. So I think very soon I'll be able to start adding more of these to the collection, which is good because I'll show you what I'm doing over on the other side there which is trying to force some tip rooting into uh, one of these old semi-permaculture garden buckets. This thing has survived a lot of sunshine. I have to give it, give it credit there. And it kind of looks like this might actually be rooting to me because if we go down to where I watered it. Oh, it's that nasty zoom again. All right, uh, I'll zoom in and get back to you. Yeah, okay, not the world's best zoom on this camera, but with my naked eye here, I can see white roots that are definitely shooting out underneath into the soil here so i need to cover that back up that was just exposed when i uh, watered it with the can yesterday but that means to me that i can snip this off over here and i now have a second gooseberry bush at least and that also means that i'm going to find similar branches zoom back out here pan back out I'm going to find similar branches because it was just kind of like this one and a few more buckets. I'll root a few of these this way because if that is a super simple way to propagate these, the natural way at that, then I'm going to go with it because why make things harder on myself than I already do, you know? You may notice something a little bit different about the garden here. Finally got that uh, bugger off cloth for the moths. And brought the cabbages out you may have noticed they are missing from that one end of the tomatoes i have a whole bunch planted in little rows i think it's three of the purple ones and then i think there may have been two of the rows of the regular green and then i've got seeds of just or uh, rows of old cabbage and kale seeds in there and then because i read in a uh, companion book I got at the thrift store, so, you know, questionable source, but less questionable than the internet, that these things, um, all brassicas basically, will do better if they're growing with really aromatic plants. So I've got some dill seeds that I sprinkled in there. we got some sage seeds that I sprinkled in there. And I think there are even some, some chives sprinkled in amongst all of that. Really curious to know how much of the rainwater is getting through this cloth. And I haven't actually checked it since we uh, layered it down. But we have had some incredibly strong winds. And so far it seems to be staying in place. I was a little worried about these sticks we're using to hold it up, kind of poking through. But so far, we only have that happening with just the one. So, 75% of the time it's working properly, 25% of the time not so much. For me, those are really good odds. Guess while well, we're kind of looking at berry bushes and moving into the proper plantings around here, 
We've got the red current and a lovely little blue dragonfly. Camera shy dragonfly hanging out on it. We noticed the other day this plant was kind of infested with caterpillars. So much for my joking about that we don't have gypsy moths out here. I don't know what kind of caterpillars they are, but they were really pretty. So I'm like, oh, you know what? Leave them. They'll probably become a really pretty butterfly. We just we gotta have faith. Besides, they're only kind of eating the leaves. So as long as they leave the fruit alone, that kind of looks like maybe it's seen a little bit of unnecessary roughness in its time. Penalty. Anywho, most of the berries are still on there, in spite of the fact that it's uh, become a buffet for something. So that is good. That is good. I need to find a really easy way to clone this and plant out a few more of those because I would prefer to have one of those where that broken down toad is. You know, maybe two plants there. Put a couple along where the burn barbecue is. I still need to convert that fully to a burn barbecue. We'll do a video on that. Um, but yeah, so moving into proper garden plants then. We've got this one indigo rose, a volunteer tomato plant, like so many of them are in my life. But look at the beautiful purpling on that. Apparently this is a good location for tomatoes. And I shouldn't be too surprised because this is also where we had the hanging planter with the mini cherries last year. And they did surprisingly well. I'm actually really amazed that that planter is still hanging there after the winds that we've had lately, but it is, so good on it, buddy. That one Thai basil that's in there, I am totally letting that go to seed. Because if it wants to kind of like populate the area at the bottom of that with Thai basil, you know what? That's that's a good one to have lots of just kind of randomly growing wild around, isn't it? Sorry, I got distracted by a butterfly there. All right, let's move on to pepper garden, I guess. All right, trying new stuff. Handheld in the tripod to maybe make it a little steadier. So I think the most commonly asked question from last week was, hey, JT, what are the red cups for? And I figure I might as well just answer this for those of you who uh, wonder but don't ask. This is just a super lazy way for me to remember what I planted where. Because, yeah, the sun damages the cups and they've all got to be recycled anyway. But the ink seems to last the three or four months that they're going to be out in the sun. And it does generally kind of work. Because, like, in this front area, it's kind of chaotic. I've got a lot of different varieties. And granted, the back half of this, I mean, there's a huge chunk here where it starts in four again. The next, I think, three rows are all Caribbean reds, and then the next three rows and two are all lemon halves, and then we got a couple of random tomatoes. So, I mean, normally my gardening isn't this organized. So the cups just kind of went down as a standard issue placement because I know otherwise I'll forget. I am I'm an absent-minded bear. I know this about myself, so I don't even... I don't even try and fool myself. Looking at the Santa Fe Grande, which hopefully is coming up in the camera there. Got a few flower bulbs forming. Might actually get some peppers out of that. That would be nice. Those uh, Trinidad Scorpion Butch T Reds there seem to be doing okay. I would like to see some pepper pods, pepper pods form on those on the sooner side of things. Because like I said, the season's pretty short around here, right? So. Yeah, it's all about timing. But that said, some of these lemon habaneros, these are our first to fruit outside and doing pretty well in point of fact. I look at this one here and probably not coming up on the camera because I haven't learned the angles yet, but I can see at least four pepper pods on that thing. And it's only just the end of June. So I believe there's a reasonable chance that they will actually get ripe outside in the sun, you know, like a proper pepper should. Got a couple of pods on this one too, but as it turns out, that sod bunker garden is, you know, once again, it's just an, an absolutely amazing thing. <clears throat> Excuse me, frog in the throat, but looking at the one at the end here, pepper, 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 pepper they're just all over this one and the one beside it as well and again these are both um, lemon habaneros look at that eh? 
That's a beautiful thing. There's another one along the back here and off to the side. They are just loaded. And this one here, I was particularly curious to see how it would do because when I dug its hole, it was a massive explosion of, uh, I dug right into the center of an anthill basically. It's just call a duck a duck. So I kind of thought maybe it would either A, get uh, populated with aphids so they can farm for the, the nectar that aphids produce and you know, do what ants do, or B, they would create little pathways for the water and it would actually do better because it's getting more water and more oxygen and there's just more activity in the soil there, you know? Half-brained, half-cocked theories, but they work for me all the same. Now, down beside this beautiful example of a thistle plant, we've got one of the Caribbean reds. And I want to show you the pepper, but I don't want to get attacked here. And we are starting to get doo -doo -doo -doo, a fruit. But as far as I can tell, that is the only Caribbean red pepper pod actually forming on any of these plants yet. So, a little nervous, a little nervous taking a look at the espresso corn patch it seems to be doing all right again i am a little nervous i would like to see the corn thicker and, and taller than this but this could be the bad spacing on my part and it could also be the uh, the distinct lack of rain that we've had so far this year since i don't have an outdoor hose as i've griped about a few times this year um, i think that's i don't know starting to be something i really want to deal with um, yeah, and we just had to bomb the water out ourselves. It's uh, not gotten done as often as maybe it should, so. Corn likes moisture, as I understand it. That probably has had a negative effect. Looking down here, though, at the little pumpkin piles. That one's doing all right. The one in the middle, eh, not quite as well. The one on the right here seems to be an explosion of growth. Went through here, did some weeding, shocks did a little bit of weeding. We left the things that looked mostly like radishes and or were thistles that didn't want to pull. So I'm going to be curious to see if they develop anything. Haven't really got any flowers on any of these pumpkins or the, uh, the ones on the log yet, but hmm, we'll see. Again, it's supposed to be like a 60-something day variety. We'll just we'll have to see how that goes. And then the beans are working towards teaching me their lesson. They're getting very tall and need something done with them pretty darn quick. I'm sure I can figure something out, but I am very much missing that old plumbing supply store I had access to. Uh, paid for my PVC pipe basically by the pound and only paid slightly more than contractors did because I was in the store like once or twice a week. <laughs> they got to know me pretty darn well. All right, well, the battery just died on me there, so I don't quite know how much or how little of a clip I have from that. But here we are at the Chaos Garden, the end log here, where if you're careful, I need to get uh, on my knees to do some weeding in there. But if you look carefully, you can see a couple of beautiful uh, bronzish, copperish dragonflies sitting um, pretty close to the sunflower patch. Might actually see something from that this year. I really just don't know. The strawberry area this is looking chaotic indeed but what would you expect from anything you know called the chaos garden it does look like two of those ones that we bought are surviving if you watch uh shox's fairy garden updates you'll you'll notice that her strawberry plant looks fantastic <laughs> mine not so much but that one pine berry sticking its head up in the middle of all those weeds there mostly i've been coming at this though and grabbing like a pound or two of assorted dandelion greens feeding them to the chickens keeping them pretty happy you can see i've been working my way up from the back towards where we are now kind of a, a swath of smaller greens a couple more days here and then i'll be starting back at the back again but the ladies do seem satisfied so that brings us to the okay so the camera card died or was full i guess is more accurate as I was coming to show you guys this, and as I come back out, of course, the wind has picked up. Shadows have changed a little bit. Hopefully, you can see some of these radishes are coming along very nicely. I have pulled some of them out, and the carrots are starting to be a little bit more prominent in some of these rows. 
but not enough of them by any means. Some delightful nibbles though. And freak that I am, I've been just kind of pretty much straight up dipping these in blue cheese and oh yeah, a little bit of heaven, a little bit of heaven. I don't understand why the world has a hate on for blue cheese. I really, really don't. Anyway, so that's the radish and carrot bed. Let's take a real close or a real quick look up front. And then I think that's it because if the camera card's full, I have undoubtedly kept you for a very long time by this point. Appreciate your patience. Bit of a lonely bit of garden going on up front this year, but we've got the one lemon habanero planted up here. My shadow seems to be getting in the way, but I don't see any fruit that have set on that. Lots of flower starts, but no fruit yet. Beside that, we've got the Caribbean red. It's recovered quite well since it came out, but you know, all in all, I'd say the ones in the pepper patch are doing better. So having come out that little bit earlier, I'm not sure it was a good idea. But both of these plants are loaded with flower starts. So maybe we'll get something out of that. And we've got the one tomato that I did plant up here. That fruit does not look particularly happy. Might just pull that off and let it try and make some new stuff. But never done tomatoes in this front corner of the house before. Just going to have to see how it does, really. Still haven't done anything back there. Oh, this one garden patch just looks so terrible. Still need to pull that rose out, too. Oh, me and roses. It's not a love story, I'll tell you that much. Alright, so I guess we'll just hide out here in a semi-shady spot for a minute and hope that the lighting is not too terrible there. I don't know. Again, you know, the struggle is so real with this new camera. Uh, yeah, if you're still with me at this point, thank you so much for sticking around for what is clearly a particularly long Sunday garden video. Um, hopefully, I will have uh, um, a few aquaponic updates coming up soon as I do make some adjustments down there. Some general basement adjustments and, and things along those lines. And yes, hopefully, I'll have an update next Thursday for the Bears Den. We're just gonna have to see. So, much love, and until I see you next time, take care, everybody.